Greetings, this is Mr. Kastlin. Um, today we're going to find the inverse of a rational function. Remember the steps in finding the inverse of a function. We're going to start with our function f of x is equal to x plus 1 over x minus 2. I'm calling it a rational function because basically it looks like a fraction. It's got variables in the numerator and denominator. So rational comes from the word ratio, ratio fraction. So um, the first step, let's change our f of x and Let's rename our output and just call f of x y. y is just another name for f of x. So y is equal to x plus 1 divided by x minus 2. Okay, now remember the first step in finding the inverse of a function is take your y's and switch them with your x's. So exchange your input and your output. So now we would have x is equal to y plus 2 over excuse me, y plus 1 over y minus 2. Now, here's where a lot of people get stuck. You, you, you're trying to solve for y now. So, the, so exchange your x and y and solve for y. Well, there's two y's here. So that's why a lot of people get stuck right here saying, hmm, not sure what to do here. Okay, so let me show you the process. And once you see one of them done, the rest of them aren't too bad. Um, let's get rid of the fraction. Um, let's multiply both sides of these, this equation by the denominator. So let's multiply this by y minus 2. Let's multiply the left side by y minus 2. Okay, causes those to cancel. On our right hand side, we get y plus 1 over, I'm going to switch these community property, say x times y minus 2. Okay, still not obvious what to do because you're trying to solve for y and there's two y's here. <clears throat> okay, now what I'm going to do is to try to get a single y. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this left hand side. x times y is xy, and x times negative 2 is negative 2x. I still don't have a good writing device, still trying to write with my mouse. Maybe someday I'll get that, get that corrected. All right, it's still not obvious. You got two y's. How are you going to solve for y? So the trick to this is let's group everything that has a y in it on the left hand side and everything else on the right hand side. All right, so let's move over here. You've got x y. Now when you subtract y from both sides, you end up with a negative y on the left hand side. Okay, and then I'm going to add two x to both sides. You're going to end up with a positive two x right-hand side. Okay, so all I did was I grouped everything with a y on this side. Well, both of these terms have a y in common, so I'm going to factor it out. I'm going to factor out the y, which is the same as dividing each of these terms by y. I'm going to get x minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 1. Okay, now we've, we've got a single y here that we can try to get by itself here. So how do we, right now y is multiplied by x minus 1. So to get rid of the x minus 1, we're going to divide both sides by x minus 1. Okay, so we get y is equal to 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. Okay, the inverse of this rational function is also a rational function. Alright, so the trick is get rid of the fraction by multiplying by the each side by the denominator and then group the terms that have y's on one side and everything else on the other side distribute out that factor out that y and then solve y. Okay, um, not, not straightforward when you first look at it but once you see one example the others are fine. Now, remember there is a property of inverses that when I do a composite if I take this function and stuff it inside of that one, so let's call this y, let's call this one g of x. If I do f of g of x, where g of x is the inverse of f of x, if I do this composite function, um, I should end up with x. Now that's not an easy proof to do on this, this rational function, so I'm going to make a separate video to show you how to prove that this function is the inverse of, of that one.
Alright, so stay tuned for that video. Have a good day.